Welcome to Best Fit TV. I'm Faris. And I'm Laura. And every week we're going to do our very best to get the nation fit and motivated. Whether you're super active or not at all, don't worry, there is something for everyone. Especially if you like cooking, because every week we're going to come to a viewer's house and watch them make a quick, easy recipe that you can follow at home. I was lucky enough to go to Steph and Matt's mm. house. They cooked me a super healthy dinner that was super easy mm. to make as well. So I can't wait for you guys to see it. And you didn't bring any back for us, guys. Thanks a lot. Next week, next mm. week. <laughs> and I caught up with Ruth, who is on her 10 week transformation to lose 10 kilograms in 10 weeks. That's a lot. That's a mission 10 kilos in 10 weeks. But I've met Ruth and she's a determined girl. So go Ruth, we'll watch your journey. And every week I will be training with a different athlete. Firstly, it was Stevie Ward, who's a Leeds Rhinos rugby mm. player. It was so hard. I did his training yeah. session. <laughs> yeah. And did you eat the next day? Yeah, I was in bits. I egg. was in bits. Good. <laughs> and how much do you know about nutrition? Um, I'd say I know yeah. enough about nutrition. Well, I'm so so, but thankfully we've got Ben Coomer, our expert, at hand every week to give you the facts and the fiction and all you need to know about your nutrition. It's true, like fruit juices. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize if it said 100% fruit juice on the front of the bottle, that actually, that could mean that you're not getting any nutritional value. Oh, we can all fall fruit. down by that one. Most juices have loads of sugar in just as much as a fizzy drink. So do your mum says, have some real fruit and a glass of water instead. And okay, so I was really lucky to go cooking this week, but you were in Lanzarote? Um, of course, <laughs> I like get all the best jobs. Come and see how I got on on the first out and about. So I've come up Trump today for the first episode of Out and About. They've sent me here to Lanzarote in the glorious sunshine at Club La Santa, a health and fitness resort, which is huge. And they are all across the world at the moment. So we're going to find out what it's all about. There's an itinerary of 80 classes to choose from, all included. And I've been opted to go for the nine o'clock CrossFit class. I've not done it before. Like many of you, you're probably curious. So let's find out what it's all about. So if you're doing push press for the next section, then that's fine. You can do push press or you can do strict press. Hi, I'm Aurora. I'm one of the CrossFit coaches at Club of Santa. CrossFit is defined as constantly varied functional movements performed at high intensity. Today we had Faris join us in one of our classes, um, which will show you that one of the different styles of workouts that you can do in CrossFit, but again, every day is varied, so every day changes, so you're getting a different stimulus of workout every time you decide to do CrossFit. Four, CrossFit, that's it. Over halfway, 90 seconds work then, 90 seconds rest. Trying to get through as many rounds of this as possible. Remember, full depth in these squats, don't cheat yourself. And three, two, one, rest. Awesome job, guys. So that's one of four done. We're at Club Lissanta still, and there's so many things to do and try. I'm going to go out of the box and do things that you probably wouldn't do, like body combat. No idea what I'm letting myself in for, but we're going to give it a try. Let's go. Well, welcome to Body Combat. I'm Steph from the UK and this is Emma from the UK. It's a mixed martial arts based workout. We're going to be your mirror, so everyone just pop your right leg forward for me, please. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. I'm ready. <laughs> left, right, left. Where's your guard? Protect your face, not your chest, okay? So I've just excused myself from the body combat. One thing it definitely wasn't, it wasn't graceful, it wasn't elegant at all. But it's one of those classes you've probably seen, for us guys, definitely, and thought, ah, it's not for me. It's hard work, mentally, try to figure out what you're meant to be doing. And if you're not flexible like me, whoo, took some work, then kicks. So try it. If you come to one of these fitness holidays, that's the beauty of it. You can try all these things and make a fool of yourself, or enjoy it, or get the benefit. Just take part and have fun. They're also going for it. I'm done for today. It's been great. Body combat.
Hey, my name's Ruth and I'm doing a 10 week challenge with Best Fit. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this 10 week challenge is I want to budge uh, 10 kilos of baby weight that I've gained over the last, I guess, year and a half. Um, my son's actually year, a year and a half old and I have um, I had a C-section with him. I actually had two C-sections. Uh, also breastfed him, which as soon as I stopped breastfeeding, I found I actually put on a lot of weight um, last year and found it really hard to lose it. Uh, what, probably one of the other things that I found um, kind of took away from the time that I had for myself was my husband's actually a pro athlete so I had to really focus on keeping him fit uh, and you know also take care of my household and my kids, my two little ones who are quite young, Both they're both toddlers. So this is my chance to really focus on myself. I am 84 kilos now and the goal is to lose the 10 kilos and get to the 74 um, pre-baby weight. So hopefully I can um, you know, do that for, for myself. It's gonna be 10 weeks of pain and dedication and a lot of sacrifices, but I'm, I'm raring to go and I can't wait to get that goal. Hi guys, my name's Adam. I'm going to be Ruth's fitness coach for the next 10 weeks, taking her through this transformation. So Ruth, uh, we've had you in the gym already for your first assessment. Um, we've had you on the ShapeWatch device. We're using the ShapeWatch app to allow me to see exactly how my body is changing in real time and exactly where I'm gaining muscle and losing fat. Every week, me and Adam take my results using the ShapeWatch scanner and that projects a 3D avatar of my body on the app. What we've done from there is obviously we've gauged your initial statistics, okay? So from there we can see what's realistic and what we can achieve within your 10 week transformation. So as an example, every two weeks we're gonna be focusing on a different muscle group. So for the first two weeks we're gonna be focusing on Ruth's arms in particular, with some baseline workouts in between that will be full body exercises. Um, the cardiovascular training that we're gonna be doing is gonna be a combination of HIIT training, so high intensity interval training, focusing on short, sharp bursts of intense exercise with quick rest, and then we'll also mix in some low intensity steady state training such as um, bike exercises, treadmill exercises, just sort of working around you know 45 minutes sort of workout length. Okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a fitness test. Okay, okay. we're going to do it now on day one and then we're going to do it at the end of the challenge and we'll see how much you've improved. Okay. Are you ready to go? Yeah let's do it. Right let's go. Okay. Okay, Ruth, so how was that? Obviously, that's your fitness test done on day one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that and then we'll repeat that at the end of the challenge just to see how you proved. The reason why we did that is what I've done there is taking your heart rate and obviously taking it at the end to see how much your heart rate recovery has improved, okay? And it also just gives me a good indication of where you're currently at. So over the next 10 weeks, we can plan those progressive workouts in. How are okay. you feeling? Unhealthy. <laughs> no. You won't do in 10 weeks. We're gonna get you there. I just feel... Yeah? I feel unfit. <laughs> Okay. No, I it was good. It was good. No, it was good. You did really well. Go. You did really well. Okay, what we're going to do now go. is we're going to crack on with your first program. Okay, so you ready to go? Yes. Okay, let's go over this. Let's get it started. So push, squeeze, three, two, one. Let's go again, same again. Up, pause, three, two, one, and down. Pull in, squeeze your shoulder blades together, pause, keep that core tensed, that's four. Pull it in, squeeze, keep it tensed, that's five. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That's it, keep that rolling. Feet sort of a bit narrower, drop your hips so you don't want your bum in the air. So drop your hips and you're just going to hold that. It's great to see Ruth and it just goes to show you, if you've got obstacles, kids, family, anything like that, set yourself a goal and just go for it. Yeah, it's true. We also saw you doing a bit of body pump there. Yeah. 
really shows that it has something for everyone. My mum used to love Body Pump as well. <laughs> He's taking the mickey out no, of Body no, Pump. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> You've yet to see your Steve Award workout. It's coming up, don't yeah, you yeah. worry. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Um, if you fancy yourself as a bit of a chef and you want to share your recipe with the rest of the nation, then contact us on our socials because I could be coming to you. We are here at Matt and Steph's house. Thank you guys for inviting me for dinner. I'm so excited about what we're going to cook here. Yeah, that's no worries at all. It's a bit of a one pan wonder. So it started out as a vegetarian dish, mm -hmm. um, but we've added a bit of meat to it, just a bit. Okay, so it's protein. both. You can be vegetarian and have this. And yeah, you can also yeah, and it's very nice. easy, very versatile. You can mix up the ingredients. You can mix up the protein. It's something you can get home late. You want to cook something quick and easy. To start with, we've got some um, sweet potato. We've got some four carrots. We've got um, parsnip an orange and some red onion. Okay. So it's very, very simple. I didn't want to do the onion. No, you, so you, you can't my swimming try. <laughs> so all we, need, all we need to start with is you just need to start peeling some carrots. Okay. We're going to put it onto that pan over there. Right, oh wait, so we're, us we're using the peel? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where the, all the nutrients is. How good is this for me? Very good. It's got Obviously it's got a lot of veggies, that's what you want, some variation. The sweet right. potato, you can obviously cut it however, however you want and that, that'll depend how long it will take to cook, but you sort of you want so to the get smaller, it. the quicker? Yes, Please. the smaller, the quicker. Sweet potato, carrots, parsnip, a parsnip, yep. little bit of olive oil, a yep. little bit of cumin. Yep, and then we're almost going to, we're just going to finish it off with some orange. This is just give it flavour, so it's not necessary, I guess, but... Um, See, I would never think to put an orange in with my veggies. Yeah, it's just you want to... you have it. I guess you want to make it a little bit more interesting. And then we've just got a red onion. So you just want to mix them up. Get the flavours in there. So as I said before, it doesn't really matter what the order, what the order is. And then that just goes into the oven at uh, 180 degrees, and we'll just let that we'll let that cook away for about 20 minutes before we add some um, chickpeas and some kale. Next here we've got some chicken breasts. So uh, chicken breast by itself is pretty boring. Mm. So I try and mix it up with just adding some smoked paprika, just to like give it a bit of a crumb. So when it when you fry it, it gets a bit more crispy. It gets nice. a bit more, yeah, it just makes it taste a bit better. So you just have your smoked paprika. So how come you do this on top of um, the, the um, You'll see soon. So when you cook chicken, obviously um, it, it comes, it's in different sizes, obviously it's a bit higher there. So what you'll do is you'll dust the, or coat the chicken and then you hit it with a rolling pin, it sort of tenderizes a bit and then you get that, you just want that hot, when you're cooking chicken, you just want that nice level so it cooks evenly. Because um, obviously now if you had that, that bit there is going to cook a bit faster than the top bit. Okay, so we've prepped the chicken, veggies are on their way, yeah, and so I'm that, seeing the kale come out. I, seem, I feel like that's like a new thing, I see everyone now. Kale's been got pretty big uh, popular lately. So, got some new fans Yeah, but for me when I'm looking at uh, my dinner and trying to sort it out, I'm just looking for different colours. So obviously okay. we've got the orange with the sweet potato and the, um, we've got the white with the parsnip, so I want some green now. So I've got some kale and we'll finish off with some spinach later on. Mm -hmm. First we'll do the chickpeas. So oh, as I said originally this was a vegetarian dish. Mm -hmm. So you could easily just put chickpea and forget about the chickpea. And chicken. you get your protein from the yeah, chickpeas. Yeah, yeah. So chickpeas got some protein. So right. and as I said before, you could change chicken. So I've had this before with salmon. The salmon's really nice, nice. with little fish or whatever we want really. So this is a very versatile recipe. The kale turned really crispy, like mm -hmm. kale chips. Yeah, so yeah, that's are, my favourite way to have kale. There's so, so many variations. Yeah, so it'll start out pretty big, as in that, but it'll, it'll come down, it'll be quite crispy and quite nice. So this will go back in for about another 20 minutes, and hopefully when we put it back, when we get it back, it'll be nice and crispy. So with chicken, how many, like, roughly calories does this dish have? Yeah, so we're looking at, um, per serve in this dish, we're looking at about 550 calories, so I think it's about, uh, 15 grams of fat, 50 grams of protein, 50 grams of carbs, something like that. When I look at nutrition, I think, um, as obviously playing sport, there's times when you want to put on weight, there's times when you want to maintain. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's about eating the same amount of food, I'll just vary the quantity. Okay. So it's like you hear people talking about bulking and it's about eating rubbish food and that kind of thing. Um, I don't do it that way, I just, if I want to try and put on weight, I'll still eat really nice, good quality food, but I'll just eat more of it. And then I'll be the same if you want So to... if you were trying to, for instance, lose weight, you yep. would just same food, healthy food, yeah, so but just a, less. Yeah, yeah, so it's all about eating really healthily, um, a lot of variation, a lot of, um, a lot of vegetables, but yeah, it's just it's just portions, I think. Now, we've cooked the chicken, yep, so veggies yep. are ready. They're ready to go, chicken's ready, so we're just gonna add some- Smelling great, guys. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You're just saying that. No, 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 no. So we're just gonna add some here, some tzatziki, just wherever you want. You can use whatever you want, so you could use yogurt, and then we'll go with the, some bit of a spinach. 
stay the same here, just some fresh spinach, just tear it up wherever, wherever you want to go. Yeah, we're good to go. Come on, Steph, dinner's ready. Come on, Steph, this is, this is, the, this is what I've been waiting for. <laughs> and there you go, girls. Thank you. There you oh, go. Service. Hopefully you enjoy so it. Good. So is this a regular thing? Does Matt cook for you most nights? He does, he's a very good cook. No he way. really likes to cook, so I'm very lucky. I very think I lucky might be to have him. Ooh. We'd love to have you. Mm. I can confirm that this recipe is so good. Everybody should try this. The information is on the website. Steph, enjoy. Thank you, you too. <laughs> Stevie Ward, welcome to the show. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm a professional rugby league player. Um, I've played for Leeds Rhinos. Um, I've been at the scholarship since I was 12, but full time since I was 16. So, career highlight. Oh, career highlight. Um, um, I think the 2017 grand final that I won, um, the week after I dislocated my shoulder, were probably the best, best one just from, uh, almost having it ripped away from me the week week before in the semi-final, dislocated my shoulder and, and you know I thought I wouldn't be able to play, but I managed to, to get out there and play and, and win in, in, a, in a really big game for Leeds. So I think that's probably the, the biggest highlight and, and the biggest challenge that I've, I've been able to overcome. With the injuries and things like that, how did you get through those? Like, Did you use certain techniques mentally to get through those or was it a lot of fitness, a lot of just training? I've had quite a few injuries to my shoulders. Um, so it'll be different, different things. F from 18, I've always had to, to do a lot of back exercises mm -hmm. just to, 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 get my, um, to get my back strong. Um, so whether it's different things like prone row, X bar row. So the physical side of things, you've actually had to use different like machines and uh, like adapt things for yeah. you to, okay, mad. Different bars and, and, and different positioning, even for bench press, rather than doing bench press on a bench, I might do a floor press. Mm -hmm. So my sh shoulders can't go past neutral. And, and they're always stuck um, flat, and um, so that's that's a, that's a, an example for my injuries. Um, but on the other hand, I like to kind of change things up and keep things exciting as well. Mm -hmm. um, do a lot of functional training, and probably a bit late in my career, probably with those knocks and injuries, I've, I've started stretching a lot more. Mm -hmm. That's always that one thing that you're like, oh, tomorrow. Yeah. Stretching yeah, can wait yeah, till yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. But it's, I think as time goes by and even what, you're 25 and 24, yeah. you start to feel you actually like, you know what, I do need to need stretch. Need to do it, yeah, <laughs> I exactly. feel like I'm getting older exactly. every day. 20 minutes a day, that's all I try and get in, I just try and nail 20 minutes a day. Well, it's been great getting to know you. Let's go check out Stevie Ward's workout. <laughs> Right, I'm ready to get on with this workout, let's do it. Yep, so this is an X-bar floor press. Um, the position is different to our barbell. We're going to get down um, there, we're going to get involved. Yeah, you get down and then it's different positioning and keep your shoulders fixed in and your lats tight as well. So you like It takes a lot of, lot of weight off your shoulders across the front and you can, you can put more weight down your lats through the back. You will be a rugby league player one day. So this is some uh, single arm dumbbell row. Um, this is, because we're going to do sets of eight, it's mainly focused on strength. Okay. So hopefully in the last two reps, you're struggling um, to, to get that those two last reps because that will build your your stamina to be able to pull that, mu that muscle. And it's mainly on the major group of back muscles. Um, it gets a bit of lat lats in there. Um, but you want to focus on the lower, lower back muscles on this. Don't get too much traps in there. So this is a lat pull down. There's many variations that you can take. This is wide grip. You've got um, close grip. Um, there's also neutral grip. But this mainly focus on the lower lower back muscles and the latissimus dorsi there. Um, and for women's rugby league, this is one of the main exercises. So is this one of the exercises that the girls yeah. the girls rugby yeah. will do? It? Okay. This is this is a main compound exercise for, for rugby league player. We've done chest, we've done back, uh, but rugby league is a lot of power and a lot of power to come from your legs. Okay, um, I do glutes. tell you, I did legs there yesterday, so be easy. All right, you. okay, we'll go steady. We'll go steady. <laughs> um, let's have a go. This is hang high pull. This. I'll, I'll do a quick demo. So it's almost as if you're going to go down for an RDL. But as soon as you get to around your knee, you push up and pull the bar up underneath your chin, as if you're going to do a trap raise underneath your chin. You make it look so easy is the thing. It, it, it takes some getting, getting used to. It doesn't have to be really heavy on power, so it can just be really quick. That's it. 
That's it. Try and push your hips through, yeah. That's the one. Six. <laughs> it's, Done. it's hard to stay on balance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a lot. It's a lot of balance. Pull it, push it up. Roll. So this is the final exercise. It's a power exercise. <laughs> it's a power exercise. Normally in a box jump, you will start standing. You can do it standing, but on here, because we want that explosion from when you come in into a forward motion, you sit back on the on the um, bench, push forward on your feet, and then you're up as soon as as quick and as fast as you can. Just like that. Just like that. Just like Just that. Like that. So weight to the back, and as soon as you feel the pressure on, on the front foot, zip straight up and, and land on the spot. That's it. Three sets of six of them. And you got to do the full run round? Yeah, oh well, you can run round, yeah. Boom, that's it. How many? That's it, one more. Well, thank you for chatting to me today. It was so nice hearing about all of your journey and everything you're doing now. Thanks for the workout, I think. <laughs> I'll let you know tomorrow. Good luck with everything. Cool. No more Thank injuries. You. Thank you. Thank you. Has the world gone protein mad? Now, if you go down the supermarket aisles, you'll see that protein this, protein that has been advertised on all the common foods that we commonly have. If you look at your breakfast, you might have porridge. You can now buy protein enriched porridge. Now, is there really a need for all of this protein madness? Now, don't get me wrong, protein is essential in the diet. The government has a minimum requirement that we should eat every day, and us as nutritionists would probably recommend that people eat one to two grams per kilogram of body weight per day to support your general health, and if you're into fitness, it would be even more important. Now, a key consideration here in protein in the diet is the cost of your food bill. If you look at all of these products that are protein enriched, it's elevating the cost of the products that you're buying. And we want to be concerned with cost because food is expensive. On top of that, you then want to consider, do you actually need the extra protein in these products? Have you taken, for example, a day of your calorie intake and actually recorded how much protein you eat every day? Because if you don't know how much protein you're actually ingesting already, you won't know whether you need to have more supplemental protein in your diet, because then we're saving money. Now, if you're into health and fitness, you might be going to the gym, you might be playing sport, there is an elevated need for your protein intake and the timing of the protein that you take on board could be even more important. So if you're in the gym, you're into fitness, you're playing sport, you wanna be aiming for around 1.5 to two grams per kilogram of body weight to support your recovery and to support your muscles, which will be repairing themselves all of the time. Now, a final consideration here on protein-enriched food is the quality of the protein. A lot of these companies are using very low quality protein to enrich these protein products. So really, ideally, we want to be getting our protein sources from natural foods. These will include fish, meat, dairy, eggs, cheese, pulses, tofu, and the massive array of vegan and vegetarian alternative sources that are coming on the market even more and more with the rise of plant-based nutrition. The most important things we need to know about protein is that it's important. It's even more important if you play sport or fitness. We need to look at quality and cost. We want to be getting as much as humanly possible from good quality, natural sources. And lastly, if you don't know how much you need or how much you're currently taking, download a calorie tracking app and find out for yourself. It's true, isn't it? The world is going protein mad, protein ketchup, protein biscuits. Next we'll have protein fuel. <laughs> well, every week we're going to leave you a little challenge to try at home. And this week, because you did so well with Stevie Ward, we're going to let you do the honours for the first week challenge, what do we have? Okay guys, so this week I'm gonna do a plank challenge for you. Don't get too scared, because I know everyone gets a little bit nervous when plank is involved. But it's basically just this. So we're gonna spend one minute here in normal plank, followed by 30 seconds in side plank on your right hand side. Then another minute in normal plank in the middle for one minute followed by another 30 seconds in side plank on your right hand side. And then you keep repeating this until you've done 
at least 10 minutes, hopefully. <laughs> well, we haven't got 10 minutes left of the show, but I'm going to make sure Laura does a full 10 minutes. It's only fair, isn't it? Next week, Ben Coomer is going to guide us through high street lunches, how to pick the healthy options. I'm going to be attached to a bungee rope doing a bungee workout. That was great fun. And our surfer girl, Laura, is going to be joining Amy Fuller, Olympic snowboarder for the Train With feature. Join us next week. <laughs>